Hello, my friends, and welcome to another Situation Report. Today is 268th of the Ukraine-Russian War, and guys, we don't have much of a um, change on the in the deep state map. Uh, the only thing I can report from the map is that there's continued fighting all along the, the eastern front. Um, from Marienka to Swatove, uh, the fighting just rages on with uh, with no major uh, with no changes at all. So with that, let's get to the losses. Okay, guys. So today we're sitting at three hundred and fifty-two thousand six hundred. This is total uh, Russians lost, killed, or wounded in action. And we have 87,900 killed. And if we go back to yesterday, you can see we were at 87,310. So in one, uh, in one day, they lost 590 soldiers. Yesterday, they lost 600. So a bit of an uptick, if you will. And they lost another five armored combat vehicles three tanks, two artillery, and uh, that's it for uh, their losses. Okay, so let's get to the news and events. Okay, so I got a cool video here, guys, of a U Ukrainian soldiers detect and recklessly dig out an AT mine. This was incredible. So I wanted to show this because, uh, damn, like, I couldn't believe that, that uh, they would be so reckless, guys. Like, you tell me if this is reckless or not. Okay, let's play here. There we go. I think I can't play the audio. Я ебу, сука, два гитара земли перерыв, блядь. Ради, сука, двух килограмм металла, нахуй. I can't believe he's hitting it like that. Все, ведь кидай в сторону, нахуй. Like, that is pretty reckless, if you ask me, guys. But, uh, what do I know? Like, leave a comment if you think that that was uh, reckless or, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be done. I, I would be, uh, you know, very timid with that thing and trying to dig it up all nice and softly. Like, those things could go off in a heartbeat. Okay, so now, wow, my internet is kind of slow. So the Institute of War. And tonight's assessment from the study of war, critical threats, evaluations, defensive positions, basically that there's just fighting in uh, from Kherson to uh, Kharkiv area. And they showed the positions here. See all these little triangles that are everywhere, especially here in the Kimburn split. Like, uh, and all along the, the roads coming down to Crimea. So these are Russian defensive fortifications, so either trenches, uh, pillboxes, tank traps, and uh, damn, this is just going to be all bad, you know. These are, they're looking really tough. However, these are targets for uh, Heimers as well. So we'll see, hopefully, that they can uh, take them out. Okay, and uh, did want to report this. So the foreign ministers of Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Norway, Iceland, and Sweden made a surprise uh, arri arrived in uh, undercover fashion in Kiev on the train, but uh, it's great to see them coming to showing their support, and I'm sure they're going to bring uh, some more aid. Okay, this was interesting here, guys. So, EuroWeeklyNews.com 
reports uh, Lukashenko told to fire um, all staff of foreign affairs as the foreign affairs minister was poisoned. Now, let me read this here because there's no confirmation yet is, is the crazy part. So, uh, local and Russian news agencies are reporting that Belarus leader Lukashenko has been told to change all his staff following rumors that McKay was poisoned. And although there is no formal word from the government covering the cause of Mekhi's death, insiders say that Lukashenko has been advised to get rid of all staff in his home as well as his catering staff and bodyguards. The suggestion is that McKay's murder, this is not confirmed yet, was an inside job and that Lukashenko could be next. So... Who knows if this is a false flag or, you know, what he really died from. Like, this, the plot thickens and the conspiracies grow. Okay, um, here we have from Radio Free Europe, Pentagon mulling cheap precision strike weapon for Ukraine as arm makers wrestle with demand. And, uh, the Pentagon is considering a Boeing proposal to supply Ukraine with cheap, small precision bombs fitted onto abundantly available rockets, allowing Kyiv to strike far behind Russian lines as the West struggles to meet demand for more arms. Boeing's proposed system, dubbed Ground Launched Small Diameter Bomb, GLSDB, is about a half dozen plans for getting new munitions into production for Ukraine and other Eastern European allies. And we have got a follow-up on that from technology.org. And they are reporting uh, that the GLSB, in terms of range, is a compromised com compared to attackums. But at 94 miles or 150 kilometers, it would enable Ukrainian forces to hit behind enemy lines. And a single unit has a price tag of about 40,000, which is at least three times less than the base model of an Atakums. So, more bang for the buck. As an American taxpayer, I say let them have it. Looks like. Uh, well, they'll even save us some money. Okay, and from the Daily Beast, they are reporting uh, Russia's secret recruits allegedly abandoned, starving, and missing in action. And, uh, okay, so roughly 100 foreign uh, fighters recruited by Vladimir Putin's private army have been left for dead in Ukraine. Two sources with the group told the Daily Beast. And so this is Abuja, Nigeria, Nigeria. Russia's infamous Wagner group has abandoned dozens of former Central African Republic uh, rebels in Ukraine's Donbass region after recruiting them to fight for the war. Um, the car sources were recruited by Wagner after quitting the Union for Peace rebel group last December said that many of the 100 or so U UPC fighters currently in Ukraine have lost contact with Wagner after the group trained them and flew them to the Donbass region about eight months ago. So they've been in there for a while and um, some of the ex-recruits often referred to as Black Russians by many in car are now having to steal from civilians to be able to survive the hardships in Ukraine, according to Ali. I haven't seen any other reports of uh, black Russians. So I just wanted to bring you that. That was a new one for that I've come across. And I hope, uh, I hope that's news to you guys as well. And here we have Robin Brooks, and he's reporting that oil prices are tumbling. The G 
7 should ignore lobbying from Greece, Malta, and Cyprus for a high and ineffectual cap of 60 to $70 that they're trying to put on Putin for oil. He says now is the time to hit Putin where it hurts as weak demand means Russia production cuts won't do much. A cap of $30 sends Russia into financial crisis. And that would be $30 per barrel. Right now the price is at $81. Um, so yeah, I like where this guy is going. He's proposing a $30 cap. And that would really, uh, you know, bankrupt Russia, hopefully. And cut the funding for the war. So leave me a comment, guys. What do you guys think? Should it be at $30 or $60? What would hurt Russia more? Okay, and so let's move on here. Uh, oh, guys, I came across this. This is an awesome artist. Um, the video is really bad, and it goes really fast. So I'm going to pause it, too, um, so you can sh see this guy's artwork. But uh, beginning of the video says, They say I see people's souls through this sub. Would appreciate this awesome uh, artwork. And so let's get to it here. I can't play because he's got music on there. But supposedly this guy is a Russian. So here's Katerov. And look how he depicts Katerov here. Like an evil, uh, an evil devil. Okay, let's keep on going. Here's this propagandist. You can see he's spilling, you know, uh, and he's got a couple of mouths down here, and he just looks like a demon, like the demon that he is, a propaganda demon. And that's what his soul really does look like. Here's this guy. Uh, he's the Krill. He's a Orthodox church, Russian Orthodox church guy, and, you know, with his horns, and you can see, like, the bloodshot eyes, like, wow. He's the mouthpiece for Putin. Here's Prigozhin. See how Prigozhin, like, with blood coming out of his, like, he's eating, like, Oh my goodness. Evil, evil. Like, here's uh, Sergov. Ah, I should have paused it on him. Another mouthpiece. Where's Oh, yeah. Here's this lady, I swear. Look at her. Oh my goodness. Okay. Where's Putin? I can I think that's it for the no, there's still a little bit more. I think that's it for that. Okay guys. So I hope his artwork really uh, you know takes off. Again here we have a replenishment for the prisoner exchange fund. You can see uh, Two Ukrainian soldiers, one right here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine prisoners that we can see, so right on. And then we have uh, Daily Cost reporting, uh, why are there so many videos of Russian forces acting like zombies? And they're saying that... Uh, it's because of their hypothermia. They are freezing out there. And so I think as the war goes on, guys, uh, it's more in Ukraine's favor because they're just freezing out there. Okay, Noel Reports is also reporting uh, what looks like a column of T-62 MV with dynamic protection reportedly on the move somewhere in Zapakalsky Krai region of Russia. And they're bringing out all the old stuff. And so you see these tanks, 
these are all the old stuff there's a lot of tanks so so hopefully uh, Ukraine is on to this and can send them some high Mars at least uh, you know like they have unbelievable amount it's old but still uh, hopefully it will just break down okay guys the Guardian is reporting that fighting in East Ukraine descends into trench warfare as Russia seeks breakthrough. So uh, the town of Bakhmut has been mostly abandoned as relentless shelling reduced buildings to rubble. And this is where I've seen numerous videos of just um, all these Russians basically freezing. They, the drone drops uh, bombs on them and they hardly even move. So, and I wanted to finish this off with a little bit of a good story, you know. And this is a Florida, in, in the United States, a Florida-based grocery store, Publix, stopped selling all Russian-made inventory at the beginning of the conflict and are now placing the inventory on clearance sale and donating the proceeds to Ukraine relief efforts. And so they're not, they're not going to be selling any more Russian vodka. And like this is a, a trend, guys, like the renaming all the Russian streets. Um, they're taking down their monuments. They're not wanting to sell any of their products. Like Russia is going to be a third world country. And uh, with that, guys, that is the end of my report. And so if you like this report, guys, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm a brand new channel, guys. Um, so I, I can really use the help. And if you like uh, the way I present the news and try to keep it uplifting, uh, please give me a like, leave me a comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel. And having said that, guys, have a beautiful day and peace out, my friends.